1894, good luck. So we've not played before, we have no head-to-head -head score. Only 50 games for my opponent, could be underrated. Oh, it's a newish account, yeah, not many games in any time control. Okay, I'll stick to my normal Caro then. I intend to mix the um, openings up a little bit more at some point. You can pretty much pre-move d5 against everything that white does here. Now that's the correct move. The queen gets you out of the more standard theory. So I'm just going to go with the queen and move when the queen comes under attack. Just get you out of the more standard theory that little bit earlier on. Pawn comes up. So I'm going to develop and threaten to trade into an endgame. So we'll probably see the bishop up, which we do. So I'm going to develop so I can pin the knight if the knight comes up, which it does. So now I've got the option to trade there and I've done development in the process. Now I'm going to play knight up to f6 so we guard the bishop and we close this diagonal a little bit so we can still castle kingside. This is where it might start getting a bit spicy. I'm going to drop back there and see if white goes all in and castles queenside. That's perfectly playable. Mm, could well happen in which case at least I've got the option to go queenside myself if I wish. Yeah, that's what's going to come. So takes, takes, takes. And we have two attacking it and two defend it. But I don't see any way to get another piece into the attack. So I'm just going to drop my bishop back there. Now you can't play knight down right now because you lose the rook. But you can in a move or two's time. I just look into trade. Okay. So is bishop in or knight in actually a move here to hit this bishop? If I play a bishop in, I've actually got two attacking the knight and only one defending. If we trade your block, we can trade into what should be a pretty good endgame for us. I'm quite happy to play an endgame. Knight up attacks the bishop, but that might be essentially all that it does. <clears throat> I've also got knight up here and allow the capture, and it opens the file. It just means I'm less likely to castle that side, but it does create a threat. Hmm, but I think I'm going to go for my development move. I'm going to potentially allow that. It creates an immediate threat to capture a pawn. So that's the only reason I've played it like that. So I'll pre-move in case it takes. But in principle, I'm quite happy to trade the bishops. So I'm quite happy to come in, trade everything, trade the queens and go into an end game. So that might be what happens. My opponent is going queenside. We can see that a mile off now. So do I want to still play a bishop in? I've still got the option to do it now. I've still got the option to take. If queen takes, I can simply check. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Because if you go with a pawn, it messes everything up. If you go with a queen, I've still got the option to check, force a trade. And if I do the taking, you bring a pawn across, which doesn't seem so good. But my opponent might do that anyway. So we've got the option to do it now with a check. Now, if you ignore it and move the king, I can take a mess of structure up. So check, we go forward, and we're threatening to trade the knight for the bishop. Mm, you could go here and try and stop me casting, but I guess I can go this side. Is there anything more forcing better? I'm just looking at maybe c5. <laughs> Excuse me. Um... If you take, I can then take the queen. You come across and I can take back. There's no light squared bishop. It feels like a good move, so I'm assuming you'd castle. But if you castle, maybe I can get away with taking the pawn. That's a little bit more risky, though, because my own defences are getting opened up very quickly. But c5 is a very bold move to play. So c5, what if you castle... Say a king side. Might not be quite so good for me then. I'm breaking my pawn structure up. That doesn't feel quite so good. So I'm just looking at going to the simple end game. Hmm. C5, if you just ignore it in castle, can I get a bit bold and start attacking this way? Maybe. Let's do it. Why not? It might be the worst move of the options I'm looking at, but I'm going to do it just to mix things up. On the basis, if you take, I'll take the queen, you'll take, I'll get my pawn back, and you've got an isolated pawn. But my own defences are getting a bit more vulnerable. I've not castled yet, but the queens will be off the board, so there's less risk. 
and I might end up in a position where I can't actually castle, but it mixes it up a bit, risk and reward. Okay, my opponent's gone for this line. So I could take back immediately, but the whole point is I want to isolate the pawn and create an immediate one move threat. So I'm going to take, <clears throat> if down, probably just drop back, but I could go forward. I don't think I want to go forward, but this is a little bit annoying. So actually maybe I go here. If I check, you can't castle, but you're fine, aren't you? But I do have a square and I can reroute into the center. So actually it stops white castling. I can drop the knight here. If you play down, I'm going to end up in the middle of the board. What am I doing? I'm going to check and jump across. Now I might end up, like I say, not being able to castle as well if the bishop goes here. That was the move I expected. So I'll throw the check in with a view to centralizing the knight. But I could bring the other knight across and drop this one back to g6. We've got options. Just depends what white does. If you step forward, I've got the option to bring the other knight across. And then I've got the potential to trade. So he does go back. But that's still an option. Or I can take the opportunity to castle now. I think that's what I like the idea of doing. So I think I'm going to do it. My knight's got multiple paths to escape, so shouldn't be getting trapped. And now I can try and activate the rook and target this pawn. And it's not easy just to push the pawn. Equally, it's not easy to attack it because it's very well protected. But that's what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to bring this rook across and this across and maybe just chuck the pawns up the board and see what happens. And I'm leaning towards bringing my knight forward because this one can still come back. At least for now. But obviously if the pawn comes forward then this knight is a bit more vulnerable. So I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. I'm even looking at doubling up. Okay, so the knight attacks this knight. So now I've got a choice to make. Do I go here? But if the knight comes in I won't want to take. Here. Knight down takes, takes. And white is good. So here. Knight down. I could go forward with the other knight, or I can just come straight in. Hmm. I like the idea of centralizing. I can still go forward here. I expect this knight is going to come forward. And I'm just going to maybe slowly prepare this, or rook across and try and get forward. Ooh, that's inviting me to take. So I could play the other knight forward now, and threaten to actually capture and win a pawn. If you guard, rook across, and I'm still threatening to take, and you can't drop back, so I like the look of that. I'm going to play that quite quickly, not to burn my clock. I'm nearly two minutes down on the clock. Okay, so I'm going to come across. you just got to be careful. If you try and run the bishop away, then we're getting in. If you try and run potentially anywhere, we've got knight across, but I've given away two minutes on the clock. Opponents played this very, very quickly. That's the risk and reward in rapid chess, of course. Well, in any time control in chess, if you get your time control, your speed of play wrong, you're asking for trouble. But equally, if you play too quickly, that's just as bad. And of course, at some point, I need to push a pawn to give my king an emergency square just in case. But that becomes a target. So I'm looking at one of these just because there's a dark squared bishop, not a light squared bishop. F6 could be good to cut this knight here, but it, again, it's an immediate target. We could do both. So he has gone back. If I go here and you break the pin, I've actually got a check winning the rook, so I like the look of that. So I'm going to play that very quickly. It's easy to see a blunder like that. If you just don't see it on the defensive side, there's a knight check. Should see it. My opponent's very well rated, so should be perfectly aware of it. So... Has he just gone wrong here? Has he just blundered, allowing knight across to hit the rook anywhere? And if the rook moves, I can take with a check. So I think he might have just blundered knight to f4. So let's try and figure that out. If you take my knight, I take the rook, and I can force everything off the following move, because the knight can't get back to guard. So I could take the following move. So here, where does your rook go? If you go here, the knight takes. 
If you come across this way, I take with a check and it's a free piece. I think that's a blunder. So I'm going to play it and hit the rook. But if I'm missing one key move, I could be lost. Like knight across might be forced here, but I just take the rook. You take and I take back and I've won the free piece. So that could have been a key blunder there because one piece is guarding another and I'm deflecting the defending piece. And this is where sometimes, like I say, if you get your time management wrong, you just play a bit too quick at the wrong moment. It can be costly, but equally I could be missing anything on any move. But we've got a lot more space. White is very cramped here, so it looks promising if we put it like that. But we're still a minute down on the clock. And this is where my opponent needs to really use their time. But if the rook moves anywhere, in principle, I take the knight. So he's gone there, but now I think I just take, and I simply take here next move. So if I take with a check, you take, I take, the king takes, I take the pawn, and we should be up too much material. Now, I don't have to take, but I think that's the only real logical way to play it. So I'm going to do it, and I'm just going to trade everything, grab the extra pawn, and we're up in exchange. And we're up a pawn. So we've got six versus five now. If I give the trade back, that feels like a mistake right now. So I think we just need to slowly develop. Just wait for an attack on the rook. Drop right back if needed. And at some point we can always, when we get the pawns a little bit further up the field, we can simply trade to a winning end game. Well, that's what we should be able to do. So just slowly and steadily does it. So I can get a tempo attacking the pawn, but then I'm not quite so centralised. So I'm just going to drop back one square so the knight can't attack the rook. But even in principle, if I lose um, an exchange somewhere here, as long as I can keep my extra pawn and keep the better structure, I should be winning. Should be. Doesn't mean I can't mess it up, but I should be. But if I get the king near the rook, it's always going to be a good trade, or it should always be a good trade. So now I think it makes sense to start come round the back and say how are you going to defend it. Now the check is covered by my rook right now so I'm going to go here. The check is simply covered by my rook that's just moved but I'm looking to come here and go after the pawn. Right now king across first feels very sensible. Okay so I think I need king across just to stop the knight infiltrating. Now I am threatening to actually shift the rook across and go after the pawns you just got to be aware of the potential pawn break but i'm aware of that i'm still a minute down on the clock though okay he's pushed forward so if we take take and take that's another pawn and then this one's going to be isolated so that seems good i don't want to burn all my time so i'm just going to take and take and I'm going to try and go after this isolated pawn. And then I'm in a position where I can definitely trade if I get a chance to. So here, actually that just loses the game on the spot. Just take your time to check. And that wins the game for us on the spot, or it should do, barring, you know, silly still nips. But as long as you make sure your opponent's got a move, I can cut the king now so there's no escape. You've got moves and I can just run up and... Protect my rook and then get another queen. So guard my rook. The king can definitely move. So we just get another queen and we give check there. We just have to make certain here that the king's got at least one move, which you do have. And then we give checkmate next move, which we can pre-move. So that's a very good win. We played that one pretty well, I felt, in the end. So let's pause that and put it through the engine. 49 moves. So the Karakhan defense or the variation, if you click on that, it'll bring some puzzles up you can do for training, which is really, really useful to do, especially for low rated players who are trying to learn and improve. Puzzles are very good, help a lot with the pattern recognition. So it just takes a few seconds here to run through. It just came really down to that mistake allowing me to win material, didn't it? So, what is it, 94% versus 88%? Sometimes these figures can be a bit misleading. My centre pawn loss was 18, my average is 32. My opponent wasn't much more than that, so it's actually, you know, not bad. It's not flagging, though, any main blunders there, but there is one here. So if I refresh, then that should disappear. 
that's just a little glitch on the system. I've noticed that a few times, I don't know why. But the engine is saying there's basically no bad blunders there, there's just a few mistakes. So I've got four inaccuracies, my opponent five, and then four mistakes. And we're basically level here. White is slightly better out of the opening, just because of the line that I played is not best for black. You can see we're back level here. So if you turn the engine on, you can see what the engine was saying. So yeah, I was looking at jumping into the middle here, like I say. So I'm still better with a trade. And the engine is saying I should have played an immediate H5 there. Um, it does kind of allow G5, but it's saying H5 is better than C5. But I'm still perfectly level, so this is where we're at on the graph. Correct a take here. I should have brought my knight forward straight away instead of castling, so castling is a mistake there, or an inaccuracy. But we're plus two better here now, we're piling on this bishop. So it was correct to go forward, and then that's where we get a big mistake, and then it loses material, and the rest of the game was relatively straightforward. See, I like a thought there, knight across, it still loses a piece. Uh, you play knight over, we just take the rook, you take our rook, and then we take the knight. And then we're still attacking the pawn, we've got a square to come back to, so we should be winning there. We're still plus five better, so it was relatively comfortable there, but not a bad effort from my opponent, is it, when you look at the headline figures? It was just really the one mistake that caused the position to deteriorate, so a good win.